In another video, we already walked through the basic setup for Drum Machine Designer, getting it added to a project, how to separate the notes so that you can do things like pitch your hi-hat hits, and then how to also separately export all of those individual hits as individual stems to hand off to someone to collaborate with. In this video, we're gonna dive a little deeper into customizing the Drum Machine Designer, uh, either by customizing the layout so that it better matches up with whatever drum pad, MIDI pad you may be using, by customizing the sounds within that Drum Machine Designer, so going beyond the basic kits that we start from, from the library, and then how to save those customizations as your own presets so that you can quickly load them up in other projects so you don't have to do it all over again. Before we dive in, I'm Marcus. I make my own indie pop music as Cradle Cat. I produce and write for other artists, and I also do some jingle and sound design work for companies. Along the way, I post my music and also just things I learn about production and uh, other music-related things here on my YouTube channel. So if you like what you see, go ahead and subscribe, give a like to the video, and let me know in the comments or over on Instagram. So in our project, you can see we already have Drum Machine Designer with the basic instrument pulled up from the library here with the 808. Got the MIDI notes separated from the last video, and now I'm just gonna pull up that Drum Machine Designer from the channel strip here so we can dive in more. The first thing we're gonna do is get this pad layout aligned with my MIDI controller. So uh, for me, it's a little just off-putting at first when, you know, I have this 4x4 grid here, but it doesn't perfectly line up with my MIDI controller 4x4 grid. So I'm using an M-Audio Code 61, which has a 4x4 drum pad grid on the left side. And if I'm clicking across the bottom left there, you can see it's out of order with what's happening on screen. So bottom left, second one, third one, fourth one. And you can see those those are actually reversed for me. So second one, third one, but you see those flash in opposite order. Now that's maybe fine for some people, but you know, that continues across the rest of the pads where it's not perfectly lined up. And in my template, I like to have things really clean. So let's go ahead and get this, uh, get this sorted out. Another thing to note is that this is just one four by four grid here. But when you click on these arrows, you can see you have access to setting up three different four by four grids for your one kit. So uh, we'll see where that plays in in a little bit because um, for a, a, just a normal four by four grid, we're going to um, need to set things up just a little bit differently um, than, than the quick one that we'll show at first. So the quick and easy setup, if you're just using four by four, really all you need to do is go to this settings icon here and then sort pads chromatically. So now, I'm just playing those in order, bottom left to top, and they perfectly line up. However, where we run into issues is, <laughs> as we get into these next pads, um, I'm gonna go ahead and click my pad octave up here on my uh, MIDI controller. And you can see, I'm playing my bottom left, and because an octave is not 16 notes, it's 12 notes, we have a mismatch on what's actually happening. So, um, you know, you can see here, that's gonna be my 13th note. But really, I want it to, in this setup, I want my, whenever I click pad octave, I want it to, to just switch to my next control here. So, because, it, because 16 is more than 12, because there are 16 pads, what we're gonna do is take up um, two octaves per per pad set here. And we're gonna reassign uh, the second and third sets to their own sets of octaves. So you can imagine this as octaves one and two. So I'm taking up 24 notes to use these 16 because that means when I go ahead and click my pad octave twice, so first, this is my bass one, I'm gonna click pad octave twice. So now I'm, now I'm up 24 notes. By default, that's gonna jump there. I wanna reassign it just for the sake of me setting up these, uh, this drum machine designer kit so that it's in the bottom left. So to do that, I'm just gonna click learn note. And then I, I clicked on my bottom left pad. You can see right now it's assigned twice. That'll clean up as we go through the rest of it. 
I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing again. Click on input, learn note. You see a list that note too. So I could, uh, you know, I could instead choose. So C3, uh, that's C sharp three. So next one is D3. Or I can just click learn note and not worry about it. So I'm going to speed through the rest of these. Okay. So now we've got all of these set up. Just going through, checking them. So that second set is set up. Over on my third set, I'm again going to click my octave up twice on my MIDI controller. So now my pad octaves are two octaves up from that second set. And I'm going to do the same thing here. So again, learn note, click it. Learn note, click it. You can see it's instead of C3, it's up to C5 now. C sharp 5, I can go to just D5 here. And uh, I'll speed through the rest of these as well. Okay, so now we've got all of these set up. I don't have any sounds assigned, but you can see them flash and they are matching in order with what I'm hitting on my MIDI controller. Um, so now we've set up way more pads than uh, pr I've personally needed in one project, uh, at least in one kit. I'm usually finding sounds elsewhere. But the point is, now that I have this set up, it's always going to be right once I get it in my template or as my preset. Um, so it's really just taking that upfront time to set it up correctly um, so that you can not worry about it. And it's just a cleaner workflow every time you're making a new project. <clears throat> so uh, to get down to my first kit or my first set of 4x4 four four pads here, I octave down back to my bass set. Oops, one more. There we go. I only clicked it three times. Now it's back. So we've got those all lined up, and it matches on the screen, the 4x4, with what I'm actually hitting on my 4x4 on my MIDI controller. OK, so now we've got the layout set up the way we want. The next thing we're going to do is dive into those individual sounds and get a little more control over what they sound like. So when we click on one of them, I'll go ahead and click on the kick here. You can see across the uh, middle line, we've got our Q sampler, Q sampler detail, and pad controls. This is, um, if you've ever used Ableton instead of Logic, it's much more reminiscent of some of the samplers um, I remember using in that. Uh, just because you have, you can, you can see visually what sample is playing. You can adjust the cutoff of it. You can adjust if it's, you know, playing all the way through or, um, you know, looking at how uh, long you're holding the note on the controller, that sort of thing. Um, you can fade it in, start the cutoff later, cut it off early, fade it out. Um, that's all what you can do here from that Q sampler main. So, for example, got the kick. I can cut it short. So it's just a little blippy there. Go ahead and drag that back out. I can bring that attack up. I can start it later. And you have a lot more control here uh, in that cue sampler. And I can even record a sound here uh, instead of using whatever sample I'm pulling in. But I'll, I'll get to that a little later. On the cue sampler detail tab here, uh, I could walk through all these, but really it's just more controls and more knobs to control the sound. Um, just as an example, you know, I can throw pitch around here. Uh, whoops, that's the fine pitch. There you go. That's more noticeable. Um, I can throw that around, get a different sound out of each hit, um, tune my drum kit to the song, that sort of thing, um, all from here. And then pad controls, these line up with uh, other controls in the cue sampler. So when I'm controlling pitch there, see it adjusts it here, as well as um, from the plugins on your channel strip. So uh, if I pull up that reverb, we'll just have that on the side here. Oops, <laughs> and this one's uh, actually controlling the insert. Sorry about that. So you can see it's controlling the um, the send knob to that reverb bus versus high cut, that's going to control the EQ low pass filter here um, that's on that individual track. 
So, um, you know, as we're looking at those individual ones, it's also, this is something I also just confused myself here with, but right now I have the, the total 808 flex uh, selected. So this is the track stack, the, the group of them. Um, and you can see I've got the, um, th this is on the left side here, but the individual track is over on the right, um, which is actually um, kind of reversed from how you would normally see them if you're selecting something. So if I, and what I mean by that is when I actually click on the track, the kick track here. So this is the kick, this is the kick track over on my timeline view. Um, now it's it's in the normal order of routing where it's got the individual track going into that group track, which is the the total 808 flex kick or 808 flex kit. So um, just a couple things that have confused me along the way. Of so I figured I'd throw that in instead of editing it out. Um, you know, as you click around, it's gonna it's gonna select those different tracks because all these controls are controlling each of those in individual instruments that fit into the kit. Back to assigning sounds, we walked we just walked through how to uh, control some of the sounds once they're already in there, but I can also swap out those sounds entirely. So, for example, here I've got the 808 flex kick. Let's say. I want to switch that. You can remember the reverb we brought up there. I'll bring that back down. I could also, if you remember, I can also do that from here. Um, but I'm going to switch this to a different kit. Different kick, I should say. So I'm switching just the individual kick and everything else is remaining the same. So, so I can just go through that instrument library. If you don't see that up, just go ahead and click that instrument library button up here. Okay, we'll stick with that. Um, you know, let's go to the rim. It kind of jumps to the correct instruments too. Go to another snare. Let's find one of those. And another snare too. So now we've got a couple of these custom instruments in here or custom hits uh, just pulling from the library, starting to build our own kit. You can start to do this same thing across all, you know, 16, 32, 48 uh, for your whole kit and build that out just the way you want it. Um, this is also where I kind of breezed over earlier, but let's say we've got, instead of this percussion piece, go to my cue sampler, go to recorder, and go to input, input one, and we're gonna record our own sample to include in the kit. So let's go ahead and just go, uh, let's see. Um, we'll just do something. Clack, clack. So now, so now uh, we've got, let's turn this to a one shot. Clack. So it'll play all the way through and you know, I could just record a bunch um, to get the right sound, and then I can just edit it out right here. So, um, so now we've got this little sound that we've just built in. And uh, same thing as before, I've got all these tools I can use to manipulate it. So... And I can just keep playing around with it until I get a sound that I want. And let's... So we got some panning there. Um, really any uh, number of things you could start to mess around with there. Bring that up a little bit there. There we go. And so you can do, you know, that's a weird example there, but you can uh, record in any of those types of sounds. Um, you can also uh, drop in audio from, you know, other sources too. So instead of my crash, if I had uh, another sample that I wanted to use, whether that's in another file or, um, you know, if, and for this example, I'll just pull in, you know, like this drag it over to replace that crash <laughs> with a same thing. We can 
notes now. You can see right here that by default, that's not starting right where I want it. So um, you can, whoops, you can, you can adjust that sampler so that it's so that it's getting that tight attack that I want. So you can keep adjusting that till it hits just at the right moment, whether that's from something in your default library here, from the loop pack that comes with Logic, or an audio file from anywhere else, whatever other sample kit that you're trying to bring in to Drum Machine Designer here. So now we've done a lot of work to get Drum Machine Designer set up just the way you want it. We've got the kit laid out in the right order to match your MIDI controller. We have the different sounds edited and tweaked just the way you like them. Maybe we've even added in some custom samples or recorded those in and edited from there. We don't want to have to do all this again every time we make a project. You know, sometimes that's fun, but at least we want to make sure we have the right pad layout. Or if you've started with 808 Flex and chosen all your favorite kicks and snares, let's make sure we can just pull that up really quickly next time. So to do that, uh, from Drum Machine Designer here, if you're um, if your library window is not open, go ahead and open that up. And right now I have a percussion pad selected, so it's showing individual kit pieces. If you want to save an individual kit piece, that's fine. You would go ahead and, and save that here. So maybe that uh, one I recorded, this was the, the kind of mouth recording that I did there. Um, but if I want to save the whole kit, make sure you click on this bar here, the 808 Flex Kit bar so that it shows it under the rest of the total compiled kits here, and then go ahead and click Save. And then let's name this uh, Tutorial Kit. It should show up under Instruments, so um, I'm just going to click Command up here so you can see where it is. Patches, Instrument. That's where it should show. So it'll save it in the right directory there, but this is it if you need it. Go ahead and click Save. And now, so let's uh, exit out of that. Let's see how to bring it up again. So we've saved it. I'm going to go ahead and just click New Track. We'll pretend this is a new project here. Empty Channel Strip, Create, and Electronic Drum Kit. Oh, it's not actually there. It's not Electronic Drum Kit. It's going to be under User Patches, because that's where your saved patches go. So you go into DMD Tutorial Kit in my case. And that will bring everything up just the way we wanted it. And you can see it's got, including that weird recorded one, the car crash, and everything that we dropped in. You can see the, the kits that we switched out, uh, the kick that we switched out, the snares we switched out, and uh, the custom ones we added up top. So when you make those edits, again, click that bar, click on Save, bring it up from your user patch library next time. Just to review what we walked through in this video, we went more in depth into Drum Machine Designer by changing the layout so it matches what is likely your setup for your 4x4 MIDI pad controller. We then customized what sounds were in our kit and even tweaked those sounds as well. So when they started and when they stopped and even recorded one in just in the tutorial as well. So the last step for all of that then was, I don't want to have to do all that work again, so let's make sure we know how to save it as that user patch preset and know how to load it up. So that was the last main thing we went over today. I hope that was helpful for you, and I know those are things that I had to figure out a little bit as I was picking up Drum Machine Designer. If you liked this video, found it helpful, go ahead and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I post these sorts of things as I pick them up along the way in my music journey and uh, also post my own music here as well. Leave a comment if you liked it. Send me a message on Instagram. I'd love to hear from you and I uh, hope to see you next time.